Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is March 22nd, 2024. Here is another weekly edition for this week. S&P 500 uh, had a nice new all-time high, but on Friday's session, we'll see some weakness here. Is this going to be the end of the rally? I don't know. I don't think so. We will have some corrective move, but... Market is overstretched, overbought anyway, if you want to slice it and dice it since this bottom. So this is not a healthy way to going up. So in even in bull trend, we will need some correction to the downside. But we don't get any correction so far. We need to have a correction at least to this area, which is going to be 48,000 to um uh, 400 uh, 4800 sorry 4800 uh, 40 to uh 4900 at least uh, to sma weekly but we don't get it yet we just are waiting for this one as a great buying opportunity right now i should say this market is in parabolic move to the upside even within this bullish momentum since october since march actually march uh, 2020 uh, all the way up to January 2022, we got a couple of testers to SMA 20. Look at that here, here. And also we got uh, some something like this here, even um, right there, right there, right there. And all in all, when I see this, I should say market is in very, very um, fragile and kind of like a parabolic move to the upside needs to have a corrective move if it gives us a correction so that would be kind of like a good buying opportunity for next um, new all-time high or even rally right now i'm not chasing the price even if you look at a stochastic momentum stochastic momentum is flatting on overbought condition rsi is picking up here so we got this bullish momentum and rsi weekly goes to overbought condition and look at the rally after that. So when you see rallies here, this is because this RSI overbought condition. So, uh, but when it goes down, it can end very, very bad. So right now I just gave you one warning signal last week, which I believe um, um, it was very, very important. Let me show you again. So this is IMI. So let me just, uh, before showing this, I wanna show you the price here. And also let me just uh, close these ones here, all indicators except IMI. So this is very, very interesting. So this is IMI and a couple scenarios we got into overbought condition and then coming back down afterwards, right? So here is the scenario for, let me show you here, where's my vertical line? Here's the vertical line. So IMI goes down, you see some divergence here. After that market, just to go to kind of like a side-based consolidation. The next time we saw IMI overbought and then turned down was here. So IMI peak before price. So this is kind of like interesting leading indicator for me. It's not lagging indicator. For different scenarios, I've seen that when IMI is picked and going down, then market goes down afterwards, right? So this is another time we got IMI picked just here and it paused. And then for several weeks, it goes down September, October, nice W pattern is here. When IMI got into kind of like a close to overbought condition, that's kind of like a good, again, buying opportunity even if this is a downtrend. So here is the scenario. I am my bottom here, when market just reached the bottom here, but market went up and then going another down. But it doesn't mean that um, IMI is wrong just because market after that going higher. So IMI is kind of like a leading indicator. You may see some kind of like another high if it is in bullish momentum or another low if it is in bearish momentum. But that means we are pretty close to the real bottom, right? So we are pretty close to the real bottom. Another scenario IMI picked here is here. So IMI picked here, price goes to the pick next, I should say five, six weeks after that and price going down all the way for three months corrective move to the downside, right? So in all five scenarios that I show you here, IMI picked and bottom first, then price follow after. 
here's the sixth time. IMI picked here, and we are pretty close to the timing perspective. Whenever we see this, for a timing perspective, we are kind of like in borrowing time. So if price goes down significantly following IMI, because IMI is heading down right now, if price goes down as well following IMI, don't be surprised. Again, when IMI gets to kind of like over, I should say, sold condition, like this, like this, and like here, we are going to go analyze the price. And if it hits a very, very good area, we are going to buy because we know that the price is coming very, very nicely, sharply to the upside. So this is, I believe, very, very important. that Everyone needs to keep an eye on because um, I haven't seen, I've seen rarely people just following IMI, but I just have found it very, very good indicator. Actually, it is kind of like a lagging. It is not lagging. It is leading indicator. And the period that I'm using is 14. So that's uh, just to keep in it in your a chart as well. So uh, probably you will see some kind of like a good feedback from it as well. Um, moving on to daily chart. Let me go to the daily chart. So here's the daily chart. Uh, we got a negative uh, momentum here today. Uh, market is coming down after hitting new all time high yesterday. So right now we can go down to this area to SMA 20. Seems like it is kind of like the right for the last, I should say five months. You're just testing SMA 20. But as I said, in a weekly chart, we are kind of like in borrowing the time for a bigger correction move to here. A potential scenario is going to be 48, 4900. So that's going to be kind of like a good scenario to accumulate more. Moving on to NASDAQ, uh, let me go to weekly chart first. So here is the NASDAQ weekly chart first. We just barely hit new all time high. But today, NASDAQ goes down as well. So as you see here, we are 12 points down and it didn't go uh, substantially to the higher high. So um, that's kind of like the warning sign and also. As you see here, we are seeing nice divergence between these two tops here. And also the bigger divergence is here between these two tops. Stochastic is showing kind of like a weak bear reversal to the downside. So still market hold up pretty well. If it goes to the downside, I believe this is gonna be the demand area, which is 16,000 to 16,800. So that's gonna be demand area we should watch for buy. Moving on to daily chart, daily chart, we got kind of like a good momentum, bear reversal for a stochastic and also price is hitting us kind of like a good selling signal. A potential scenario is going to be we are just uh, testing this trend line, at least for a short term. But I should say NASDAQ momentum is weaker than S&P, even Dow Jones. So Dow had a very, very nice sharp momentum to the upside. You will see that in NASDAQ, you're seeing kind of like a choppy sloppy. NASDAQ is exhausted. Basically, this means NASDAQ is very, very exhausted at the rally. Just drag it itself to keep grinding higher. But it doesn't mean that momentum is there. It's just dragging itself. Moving on to Dow Jones, which had a nice new all-time high yesterday, just coming down with a dark cloud. So I should say this is actually black crew, one black crew to the downside. So this is kind of like a good top information, if you ask me. So if we get below this, I should say very, very warning signal for Dow. It can go all the way down here. I'm just cautious, everyone. Needs to be cautious as well because we can see some kind of like a pullback to this area. Uh, and that's going to be kind of like a sharp move to the downside. Moving on to gold. Um, gold is coming down as well. So you'll see that lots of charts are giving us a sell signal. After yesterday, big shadow, gold is having confirmation. However, we are still above this 2145. So if we get below 25, 2145, we can go all of it down to here to 2131. Or I should say 2090, 2100 is pretty close after that. We can see some kind of like a sharp move to the ups, uh, to the downside. This is the area that I'm looking for as a fantastic buying opportunity for the next rally. So keep an eye on this. And also if you go to weekly chart, here's the gold weekly chart and we got a nice topping tail here. So this means for a couple of weeks, we should see sideways to the down. 
for gold as a good kind of like a bull flag here forms. And if it goes to very reversal, we can see some kind of like action to the upside. As long as gold is above this important neckline, we should be good. We should be bullish. And this is going to be 2000, uh, kind of like a 78, 2080. All right. So that's the area that I'm looking for gold. Moving on to um, crude, uh, which had a neck, uh, doji bar. Actually, it was negative, then positive, then doji. Why? Because this is a previous top here. And we had a breakthrough. It goes higher. Right now, it's coming back down. So this is a doji bar. I should say consolidation can form to the lower price. And if it doesn't hold here, especially here, 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 you can go all the way down here to 61. 265, which I believe it's coming. It's just a matter of time. Moving on to individual names, so starting with Bitcoin. So let me go to Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin and negative day. Oh, this is yield. Let me just uh, go to the Bitcoin. Sorry about that. Here's the Bitcoin. And Bitcoin shows a nice reverse head and uh, not reverse, actually, nice head and shoulder here. So this is, um, if you go to four hours chart, you will see that better. So let me go to four hours chart. I'm gonna show you what I what do I mean by head and shoulder here. So this is pretty neat and clean head and shoulder here, kind of like a double right shoulder here. And if it go, if it goes below a six thousand, um, sixty thousand, sixty two thousand, easily it can go all the way down to fifty to fifty two. And then the potential buying opportunity is going to be 40 to 44,000. Still not there yet. I know lots of people saying, hey, Ali, what are you talking about? We are at 60,000. You're talking 40,000. Yeah, it was 40,000. It goes to 60,000, even 70,000 in a couple of weeks. So Bitcoin price action is very, very volatile, especially when it forms topping uh, formation like this. It can go easily 10%, 7% each day. So that's Bitcoin, guys. It's not a stock. And uh, moving on to U.S. bond deal, bond deal is going down. So this means uh, the top is there. I believe that the top is there. So if it goes below this little point, it can go lower low as well. So it can easily go sub 4% to the downside. Moving on to treasury, which is kind of like an inverse correlation with bond yield. So treasury goes higher today. And it's just 89 cents to the upside. Still, this area could be a potential buy. I'm not sure yet. VIX had a nice uh, two shadows here, actually two confirmation to the upside. Pretty nice. Dixie um, going higher. So Dixie is diverging from bond yield. That is interesting because usually Dixie and bond yield is going higher at the same time or going lower at the same time, which kind of like a dragging each other. This time, bond yield is down, Dixie is up, and bond yield is having a bearish formation. Dixie is kind of like a neutral. I don't say this is bearish or bullish. This is kind of like a neutral. However, we are getting into this important resistance here, which is going to be 104. So we'll see. Magma indicator, just the uptick today, not a bad session because of Apple. Apple was up. And just holding up pretty well after yesterday's sell-off. I believe that if it goes again below 170, Apple easily can go to these levels, which I'm waiting for. Amazon, positive today, but after hours, it goes lower. Meta, positive today, after hours, it just does go slightly lower. Microsoft, uh, gapped up, uh, but compared to yesterday, it goes down. So 63 cents down, Google, was kind of like a leader today. It goes higher, $3.17. I believe that these ones are kind of like you're looking for a correction. They're not that strong. Netflix is a strong. Netflix is just creeping higher. It doesn't give us any sign up reversal. It's pretty exhausted, but move is upward. So we are not shorting this. I was looking for short, but it didn't. Tesla, nice move. So Tesla again goes to this area 166 gapped up but sharp move to the upside 170 dollar fantastic move so tesla i believe that if it goes above 178 that could be kind of like a bullish scenario smh is up so semiconductors were strange today so they were all negative nvidia was positive but at the end of the day nvidia successfully dragged them all to the positive territory smh dollar 33 cents up socks 
27 cents up, not a bad price action. Taiwan Semiconductor, $1 up. AMD, 97 cents up today, not a bad. It was negative. NVIDIA was the leader. So that's why semis are strong today. NVIDIA just to keep itself an uptrend, $28 to the upside, pretty good. Um, Texas Instrument, 11 cents down today. It was lower than this, but it just go higher. Even sometimes it goes to the positive territory. Lamb Research, however, didn't end positive. Even after hours, it goes lower. So this name is in kind of like a losing the momentum, but it is very strong. It's one of the best, actually. XLF, so this is the reason why Dow smashed today. XLF goes down, KBE goes down, KRE goes down, JP Morgan $2 just engulfing at the top. Goldman Sachs down after yesterday breakout. Bank of America, 46 cents down. So all banks, Wells Fargo, 72 cents down. All banks are signing for a reversal. Gold miners, GDX down today, sharply moving down. So it can go lower. Again, um, cannot hold $30. GDXJ, 53 cents down. AEM goes down. Reversal is there for gold miners, at least for short term. And EM. 76 cents down, Franco Nevada, $2.24 down, and Gold Barrick uh, goes down, but after hours it goes higher, so 29 cents up. Not a bad price action for gold miners. They are due for corrective move and they're going down with gold, but that would be the next buying opportunity. XLE Energy is coming down. Um, crude was Doji, XLE is down, XOP is down, OH is down. So all um, energy stocks are down today. Exxon, just a Doji bar. This one had good momentum last couple of weeks. And right now, I believe that we are just reaching to this important uh, gap and resistance here. So we should see some kind of the rollover going down at least to this area. Let me show you. So this is going to be the area that I'm looking for. So this is going to be a good kind of like a breakout level. So if if you're a trend uh, follower, you're going to go with that approach, but I'm kind of like a going with a supply and demand. So this is the area that I'm looking for as a good breakout. So this is the area. This is nice area. So this, you see this red bar? So go this way. So this is the area that demand is there. So I believe that this one is going down to 1.4 to 1.6 again um, next time. Chevron already rolled over. It can go all the way down to this gap. 1.45 is coming for this. Yeah, I believe I covered everything. Um, this is a weekly edition. I will provide some individual name analysis as well over the weekend. So make sure watch the channel. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and have a good one. Have a good weekend. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.